Hi everyone, and welcome to the final round of the Mill Hill Congress. Um, this was on day two. I only had to play two games on day two. Uh, it was still <laughs> very hot as always. Um, but yeah, in this final round I was the white pieces, so I sort of alternated each game. Luckily I was on the three white, two black side of things. Um, but yeah, uh, so far the tournament's been going sort of okay. Um, my results have been fine, it's just the games themselves uh, speak more than the results that I've had, and I definitely had more opportunities and blundered in positions that I shouldn't be blundering in. Um, if I want to be improving and show that I definitely should be a higher rated player than I am. Um, but obviously my chess actually has to reflect that I'm getting better. So this, this uh, tournament as a whole gave me some real insight into my weaknesses as a chess player because nothing hurts more than sitting at a chess board and not having a plan and having to sit there and come up with one on the spot and even if it was the right plan and sometimes I did manage to get them um, you just don't like that confidence and it feels really awful to play because when you make a mistake further down the line or something goes wrong then suddenly you start questioning yourself oh should I play that on move 3 etc etc and uh yeah, it really gets inside your head. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's start with this game then. Uh, so knight f3, because this is what I play. Knight f6, uh, remaining flexible. Uh, I have to play c4, because I don't know if he's a King's Indian player or he's trying to get some other setup. Uh, so that's why I don't play d4 just yet, because he can then play c5. Uh, g6, so looking very King's Indian, very happy for me. I've scored very well personally against a King's Indian. Um, I think my opponent played it in round 1, and it also led to a nice game. Uh, d4, just expanding, bishop g7, g3. Uh, my opponent plays d6 here, which is a completely playable move. Uh, more common is just casting, uh, but the moves are pretty much the same. Uh, there's little to no difference. Uh, you can play either order, it's both fine. Uh, I play bishop g2. Now, expecting him to cast and go back into the main line. He plays c6. c6 is um, a very on-theme King's Indian idea, so there's nothing wrong with it. As such, it's just perhaps slightly more accurate to castle. Uh, but again, he could play castles on the next move, and the position would transpose back to main position. I castle. He still doesn't castle. <laughs> he goes for bishop f5. Now, notice all the other previous moves. Literally, you could have started with castles and played these two moves and we'd be in the same position and this is completely normal. But now he's made a big commitment to actually outside of playing normal moves and this is now questionable in what black is doing. So I play very naturally, knight c3, just developing. I'm not scared of this exchange. I'd be up the bishop pair. It's just good, yep. Um, he plays queen c8. Now, queen c8... Often against Fienkerta structures, you want to use the queen to back the bishop so then the bishop trades to the bishop, and that's often good. Um, but this often happens after you finish developing, and uh, white can almost ignore this at this point and just uh, carry on play. Um, now, I think maybe perhaps I saw too many ghosts in this position, and I tried to stop h3 by fours, uh, the bishop h3. But you can actually just ignore it. And what I should have played in the game uh, through later analysis is just e4. And if he goes for this idea still, uh, this is not good after e5. And we can just get to this position. And which would you rather play as black or white? Look at white with all this space. All my pieces are very naturally developed or coming out. And black is sort of just stuck um, in this position. So yeah. That's another way of stopping it, probably more accurate than what I played. So what I played in the game, uh, if we scroll back, is bishop, uh, is queen b3, which is also completely fine. It's just that when I was an analysing this uh, with my coach as well, this was sort of the a key point that to me seemed fine in the game. This move is, is fine, it's just so much more natural to play with e4. He castles. He can't play this idea. This was my sort of tactic because now the b7 pawn isn't 
G7. G7 pawn isn't defended. Um, so he saw this in Castle finally, which is perhaps what he should have done a bit ago, but now his pieces aren't sort of placed where they should normally be. Uh, bring my rook to the center. Again, this is... I'm playing sort of standard ideas, so the queen here and the rook comes to here in most castle positions, especially against the king's Indian. Just because my opponent's played slightly off, it would actually have been more accurate to put my rook on e1, as we'll later see, and so much so that I could have even wasted the tempo and brought it back. He brings his knight to the center. I play h3, just kicking away the bishop. He goes to the trade. Uh, yeah, also by uh, putting the knight here, it's blocking the bishop, so h3 is now possible. So this sort of forces the trade, and I'm happy with this, because now I've got the bishop pair. Um, and because I gained the bishop pair, I then spent most of this game trying to open up his position. So my two bishops will dominate his two knights. Um, but I committed to that idea a bit too much, and it made me avoid certain moves because I was scared that if I push one of these pawns to try and open up, instead of taking, he'd just push the other way and really close the situation down. It turns out the position just would be too cramped for black to play, and white gets all the fun. I just sort of stuck to principles too much rather than adapting to the board itself. Um, but he plays rook b8 defending the spawn, also an idea of playing a6 and pushing b5. This is black's main counterplay. I play bishop e3. Um, computer actually really likes bishop e3, but from a human standpoint, I shouldn't be playing bishop e3. This It looks really weird to play, and I'm just blocking in my pawn, and eventually it does start making sense and it's okay but in this position black is really cramped and the way that white shows advantage is just by pushing all of his pawns up the board and black has a very hard time which i finally get around to doing but perhaps a bit slower than i could do so bishop e3 a6 going for b5 i bring my rook to this nicer file developing the rook it's fine uh, he plays h5 which is sort of a nothing move Really, he should be playing b5 at this point. Um, again, I should be looking for pawn pushers. I end up trading knights here, uh, and I bring my bishop back. And this is fine, but it does it hasn't changed the position at all. Nothing's actually happened. And if anything, if I am going for a, an attack, I want more pieces of the board, so it's sort of counter, uh, productive. Um, he... Uh, this place is his king. I guess he was scared of this diagonal, I'm not too sure. And finally, I start pushing pawns. And we can actually see that uh, as soon as I start doing this, the game starts becoming much easier for white to play. Because, um, like, what do you do as black in this position? There's not much to do. Uh, you could go for this b5 push, but after perhaps queen d3 or anything it there's just not much going on for black and it's hard to play uh, so knight back queen forward and now i'm pushing my pawns this is what i should be doing ages ago but here we are finally and i'm making some space look at all this space that i've taken up in the center so much control and black is sort of just stuck there waiting for white to make a move he brings his knight out um this it's a bit of an odd move, and uh, I find I'm just going to push. And he's put his knight on sort of the edge of the arena, out of the way. Um, he brings his knight in. I did see that by pushing, I let his knight in, but now I have a nice another pawn push. He takes, takes, moves his knight back. I can push again, and his king is incredibly cramped. This bishop's incredibly cramped. He can bring the knight back, and this knight isn't going anywhere. But now I can pin it to the queen. I did see this move in the game, but after he brings the king back. Um, it is still ugly for black, and white is definitely better. What I didn't see and why I didn't like this is because at some point, I'm going to have to move my king off the back rank to get the rooks in. And I didn't want it to be such that my queen is undefended i.e. this queen would attack this queen, and the knight could check me at the same time, so imagine these are nonsense moves. But imagine something like this, 
uh, where the knight would come and check me and I'd lose the queen. But this doesn't work. Um, a, because I have to be a complete idiot and walk into it. And B, because the queen covers both these two squares anyway, so this check isn't going to happen. So I'm just seeing ghosts and this queen... The bishop on this square is also completely fine. Um, but the queen probably had better chances. And uh, it'd be very hard for back to play. Like This, this rook has to get out of the way. This king then has to escape. And yeah. I go for bishop here. He goes for uh, rook uh, h8. This is quite a good idea because now the king can sort of escape behind the rook and is no longer trapped. But in doing so, he unconnects his rook, so that's sort of the downside. I push in the centre. Um, honestly, it was very hot, and I actually meant to play c5. I just played d5, which is a bad move. And the moment I played it, I was like, what am I thinking? And I had no explanation apart from my brain has melted, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, not really great chess analysis or anything to gain from this, apart from when you go to make a move, make sure you're actually making the move that you want to make, uh, because this just hangs a pawn uh, by four. So take, 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 and black is up a pawn, and there's not really much conversation for it. Um, he believed me, I guess, and went to shut down the position. And sort of positionally, this is a good idea because I have my two bishops, but uh, he definitely should have just taken the free pawn. And yeah, I sort of got quite lucky in this game. <laughs> um, now I protect the pawn, so everything's fine. Uh, he starts attacking my pawns, and this is good for me. So he made the right idea of shutting the position down. Now he's trying to open it back up again. And. This is sort of why it shows it's so hard to play for black, because really black kind of has to just, just sit there and do nothing and just manoeuvre his pieces. He can't actually go for a counterplay, because the moment he starts doing that, then it starts to really favour white. Um, so I took the pawn. He has to take back with the queen. Um, and this, the game sort of continues, because he has to defend this pawn and not be in a pin. But he actually takes back with this pawn, and at this point... White really shows why an open position helps, um, because I'm just going to start pinning pieces. So, compare the two rooks on the field. Uh, mine are much better placed. His knight's quite nice, but this bishop is trapped, and these two pieces are, are doing great. So, he can sidestep the pin. I then get rid of his pretty much only good piece, apart from his queen. Uh, he takes back. I take with a pawn. Um, play with tempo. I have a pass pawn. This is looking good. Uh, he brings his queen forward. Bring my queen to the centre because it's sort of not really doing anything behind this c4 pawn. And also, what I saw in this position is basically his only form of counterplay is bringing the king back and he threatening mate on h1. And I knew this position was so winning for white in the game that I didn't want to blunder mate. And so I made some suboptimal moves just to make sure that I'm not losing the game. <laughs> um, which I think is a perfectly good strategy and a good human approach. Um, so I bring the queen to centre. Uh, my, my idea here was that if he did bring the king back, is that I can then just force the queen trade. And um, this pawn is very scary. And he's no longer really threatening any uh, checkmating possibilities. Instead, he goes for a hanging pawn, but um, this is sort of ambitious as he's avoiding really what's going on in this position. And I can't remember what great chess player it was, but uh, Nimzovic, um, one of the uh, modern players, um, pass pawns are meant to be pushed, so push them um, after the queen trade this. Um, and Really, what has black achieved by putting his pawn, his bishop over here? Not that much. He now has the threat of me making a queen, so he puts his rook in the way. Um, but my bishop is the same colour as the promotion square. Now, the issue is, is how is my bishop going to actually attack on d8? Because his bishop controls this diagonal, and this diagonal is the only way, and everything else is sort of being blocked by his pawns and my pawns. However, this is, doesn't matter because I can bring my rook in 
and start attacking the king and harassing the king. Notice that this pawn push from earlier means that the king is stuck on the back two ranks. It can't actually escape forward. Um, he tries to go up to the pawn. Um, yeah, there's not much else to suggest in this position, really. Um, computer gives king g7 as plus two, but the instant you play it, it then realizes that this is completely losing after this. Um, or oh, king g7 or king g8. But even this, it's just... We can check. Uh, we can... Uh, go after pawns. We can bring this in, go after pawns this way. Yeah, it's just very hard for back to play. Um, in the game itself, he goes after the pawn. But I can defend it with tempo as well as checking. And in this position... It's basically only one move that doesn't lose the game on the spot. Because if he brings his king back to the back rank because he can't move it forward, then I can play this with check. And he's either losing the rook after he moves the king, or he can take and this is leading to checkmate. Uh, so the only other reasonable move is bishop um, g7. The problem with bishop g7 is that Remember this bishop was guarding the only diagonal that was sort of allowing the bishop to come in. But now it's pinned, so I can actually bring my bishop back round and attack like this. And this was the plan that I was going to go for on the game. Um, and there's not much white black can do. If, if black at any point... Remember, black can't come forward. If black goes back to the back rank, this idea works again. And white is winning. So black is very much in Zogswang. There are no good moves to make. Um... In the game, uh, I brought the rook forward first, and he went to the back rank, and I played this, and the game is sort of over. The reason why I played um, rook d6 first before the bishop idea is that had he come to here at some point, then I could take here as well, uh, which would have been nice, but also this just worked. So slightly inaccurate about me, I didn't need to do this, I could just go straight for the idea. Um, but yeah, that was the final round of my uh, Mill Hill Congress. This was the first Congress I played in as an adult. Um, it was a lot of fun, definitely something I'd do again. Um, the actual games themselves, I wasn't super happy with. I was the in the under-1900 section, which is the section I applied for, I think I was the sort of ninth best rated player and I ended the tournament in the 8th or ninth best slot so I did as expected um, but that's considering I played a couple of a few weaker rated opponents I only had one opponent which was the same rating as me which I lost to sadly despite her winning the whole tournament and one opponent that was higher rated than me who I even drew as black which was good um, but my games against the lower rated opponents especially the one in game 4 where I drew in a game that I should be winning was not great and the sort of knock-on effect on this is in a tournament the more games you win the better opponents you play against so if i want to be playing higher rated opponents and improving on my chess i need to be able to solidly defeat opponents that are lower rated than me and in doing so it's not that i, I don't like <laughs> not trying to say anything against lower rated players it's just that against higher rated opponents they're more likely to play uh, better moves and in doing so, I then have to be sharper and think faster and sort of pressure myself. But if I'm not on that level because I'm drawing or losing against people who are racing than me, then that's not good. So yeah, this tournament went as expected, I guess, but really uh, I wasn't particularly happy with my performance. Um, moving forward, I don't really have many chess games lined up apart from tonight. I'm playing in the final round of the Colston Cup. So hopefully that goes well, and as we know from that, I'm actually fighting for first, so that's going to be quite exciting. And then following that, um, I don't have many games planned, because uh, the season for chess sort of ends in late summer. And I also have some exams coming up, uh, more exams, so I'm going to be a bit busy. Um, but I was thinking of maybe doing some series on end games because that's definitely something from my games I need some working on, and just going through that, and... Uh, sort of giving a bit to the, it to my YouTube channel beyond just uh, replaying my games, uh, actually having some sort of educational content as well, which I thought would be quite nice. Um, but yeah, uh, cheers for watching. 
and I'll probably have a video tomorrow or the day after, depending how good I feel about the uh, final match from Coulson. Okay, bye.